introduce Dr. Korshitz and Dr. He. Uh, Dr. Walter Korshitz is the director of NINDS, and Dr. He is the uh, currently the program manager in the Systems and Cognitive si Neuroscience Cluster. And um, Dr. Korshitz or Dr. He, are you? Ready? Yes, I, I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Julie, for the nice introduction and the invitation. So um, Dr. Korshetz has a, um, do you hear clearly? Sorry. I think Dr. Korshetz might have just joined. Oh, okay. Really? Well, oh, yeah, Walter. Oh, yeah. He has a prior, um, let me use my, is the video, uh, is the audio okay? Or do I need microphone? You sound great. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Yeah, so he, he has a, um, a scheduled conflict with a um, previous engagement, so a uh, commitment. So he, he will join and chime in, but I don't know how long he can stay. So I'll provide the brief overview of NINDS funding for sleep research. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is a pie chart of um, NIH sleep research funding in um, 2019, the last year where we have the um, official public data. So in 2019, NIH as a whole funded $436 million in sleep research. And then the NIH funding for sleep research includes uh, both basic research on sleep and circadian rhythm and uh, research on sleep disorders. So um, the importance of sleep to our health is clearly demonstrated in this pie chart as um, most NIH ICs fund um, sleep research to um, different degrees uh, of funding level. So um, the NINDS funding for sleep research is um, ranked third in 2019. And in recent years, we have seen a huge increase in sleep research funding. Um, in 2016, the total was um, $33 million. And in 2019, it increased, it, it more than doubled to $69 million, uh, $68 million. And um, the number of sleep-related projects also increased um, by more than 25%. So there is a difference between the dollar amount and the number of projects. That's mostly because we funded a number of very expensive clinical trials. So um, what kind of research, sleep research, do we fund? Uh, next slide, please. So this depends on um, our mission. The mission of NINDS is to seek fundamental knowledge about the brain and the nervous system, and to use that knowledge to reduce the burden of neurological disease for all people. Um, because of our mission, the sleep research we found um, include neural regulation of sleep and circadian rhythm, and the impact of um, sleep and circadian regulation on the nervous system in both health and disease. So um, the sleep research portfolio NINDS funds um, is a um, balance of both basic research, translational research, all the way to clinical research. And our definition is slightly different than some other institutes use. So next slide, please. So I'll do, um, briefly walk you through the um, a kind of definition we have for um, different uh, research. So the we have four t different types of research. We categorize the research we found by four different types. So the first big part is basic research. It's aimed at understanding the structure and the function of the nervous system. Under that, we have two subgroups. Basic basic, which is aimed at understanding the normal nervous system. And the basic disease focused is um, understanding the disease mechanism, for example, a narcolepsy research, a basic research on narcolepsy. Um, and, and also we have the applied research, which is aimed at developing or testing diagnostic therapeutic agents or preventive um, interventions. So under that, we have the translational research, um, which is up to but not including um, the first in human studies. And the last one is the clinical research. They include first in human studies all the way to clinical um, trials. As I mentioned before, for our funding, because clinical trials, clinical research are usually more expensive than basic research. So we, we've seen uh, a discrepancy in the dollar amount versus the number of applications and ideas found on sleep research. And in 2013, um, when we did our strategic planning process, 
we noticed that um, NINDS as a whole um, have a significant drop in the number of um, basic research grants. And the reason for that was the um, PIs are not submitting as many applications uh, focusing on basic research. So we issued a um, promoting basic new, uh, research PAS and sleep researchers have um, benefit from that research uh, initiative um, tremendously. Next slide, please. Um, so I want to briefly walk you through how do we make um, funding decisions and I borrowed this slide from uh, Dr. Korashat's one most recent um, council presentation. Um, so um, to advance our mission, we constantly surveying um, the scientific landscape and analyzing our portfolio to ensure the holistic health of science effort. And most of our competing um, budget funds investigator initiated research with an annually established pay line. Um, that's the majority, but also we um, uh, actively manage our portfolio by offering different programs and funding opportunities. Um, for example, the brain initiative, uh, brain research through ad advancing innovative technology to capitalize on the scientific opportunities, the um, scientific tools, and also to fill the gap. As I just mentioned, we have a basic neuroscience uh, program announcement was set aside to stimulate the basic research. And also we um, meet public health challenges, for example, the uh, Alzheimer's disease and related dementia initiative, the HEAL initiative, um, helping to end addiction long-term and the most recent COVID-19 initiative, uh, which I will um, discuss briefly later. And also we um, train and uh, sustain the biomedical uh, workforce for the, uh, we have a, uh, a complete program for the training, including diversity training. And also we have the um, R35, which is research program um, awards, which is an eight year um, program. I mean, support PIs for eight years. And also we have the select pay program to pay applications beyond the pay line. Um, and for example, we have um, bridge awards to investigators without other lab support to prevent the loss of human and infrastructure. And we help investigators. Um, these are people, um, early stage investigators. These are people within 10 years of terminal degree. And we um, help, we offer them a better pay line. So their success rate can equalize with those of more established investigators. And also grants with, um, that could bring diverse perspectives to excellent science. These include the tools, skills, or the um, diverse workforce. And also we have high risk, potentially high impact applications that offers exceptional opportunities for um, progress. So I'm happy to report that um, the NIDS sleep research, NIDS funded sleep researchers have taken advantage of um, most of these um, different programs, opportunities, selective pay um, programs like um, proposals on narcolepsy, restless leg syndromes. We've paid them above our pay, pay line. Uh, next, please. So the COVID-19, as we all know, uh, we are at the COVID-19 pandemic, but we don't know as much um, uh, about neurological complica complications of COVID-19. So as such, um, we issued notice of special interest um, offering um, availability of competitive revisions and administrative supplements um, we offered the two of them. The first one is our, our research on biological effects of 2019 novel coronavirus on the nervous system. And so far we've funded five um, supplements to collect clinical imaging and other data on the neurological aspects of um, COVID-19. And this one is a rolling basis. We are still seeking applications and ex it expires next April. And the other one is on the establishment and the maintenance of a research database for neurological manifestations of SARS-CoV-2. And that one is already closed. Um, NINDS funded um, the NIH COVID-19 Neural Data Bank and the Neural Bio Bank. So um, hopefully we will get um, an interesting result. I mean, nice result from the research on neurological complications of COVID-19. Next, please. Um, I'll just highlight two more um, funding opportunities. 
that are sleep specifically sleep research focused. Um, the, the first one is the uh, mechanisms underlying contribution of sleep disturbances to pain. And that one is led by National Center on Complementary and Integrative Health Institute. So the purpose is to encourage mechanistic research to investigate the impact of sleep disturbances on pain. And the second one is mechanisms and the consequences of sleep disparities in the US. Um, it's led by the Minority Health Dispar and Disparity Institute. The purpose is to promote research to understand the underlying mechanisms of sleep deficiencies among US population that experience health disparity and how sleep deficiencies may lead to disparities in health outcomes. So um, sleep researchers are encouraged to apply to both um, initiatives. And last slide, please, thank you. Finally, I just highlighted a few examples of um, clinical trials that we are currently funding. As you can see, um, it touches a lot of aspects of the um, neurological conditions or um, disease that NINDS is responsible for. I'm not going to read the title, but I highlighted um, the conditions like uh, stroke in, um, and people in intensive care unit, hypersomnia syndrome, including idiopathic hypersomnia and um, narcolepsy type two, restless leg syndrome and the Parkinson's disease. So um, that's it, thank you. And Walter, do you have anything to add? Dr. Koroshetz? Hi, hi, yeah, let's walk to here. No, Jan Janet, that was uh, quite, uh, that was quite good. Uh, so yeah, we are certainly uh, totally invested in trying to move sleep science forward. And as Janet said, it's spread between, you know, the basic science of you know, circadian rhythms all the way through to, as you can see, an actual clinical trial in Parkinson's disease to improve sleep. Um, and, and as she also mentioned, there's been renewed interest uh, in the HEAL initiative uh, in looking at sleep um, uh, and its relationship to the perception of pain, but, but surprisingly also to, um, uh, to opioid abuse. Um, so yeah, we're happy to, you know, to work in this space with, uh, with Jim Kiley from NHLBI particularly, and um, happy to hear from folks. I, as Janet mentioned, I have to run to another meeting at uh, one o'clock, but happy to take part in the discussion. Thank you, Dr. Korshitz and Dr. He for being here and uh, your strong commitment to sleep and sleep disorders research. Uh, it's so appreciated. And it was wonderful to meet you guys uh, in person. I can't remember if that was February or November, back in the good old days. So <laughs> hopefully we'll be together again soon. Um, I believe um, we did have a question via chat. Um, it looks like Dr. Korshetz already went ahead and answered that, um, for... Well, actually, so I didn't... Oh. It was Louis, so I never answered Louis directly. <laughs> um, what I did is I answered for the Institute as a whole. I don't know the answer. I don't know if Janet has a clue or guess in terms of Lou's question about the sleep money and how much what proportion of that was basic versus applied. That, that was Louis' question. Oh, okay. Yeah, so unfortunately, oh, sorry. Um, unfortunately, in 2019, we don't have the internal um, basic clinical, the four categories, subdivision um, data yet. But um, in 2018, about half is basic basic research. So that's mostly driven by investigator um, the number of applications investigators submits. And then about 20% is basic disease focused and uh, clinical trial is about 20% and translational research is about 5%. And I, I suspect in 2019 when the number is 69, the clinical component is probably 30 or 25 at least, but we don't have the um, data yet. All right, thank you guys so much again. And um, I've just realized that I've already not followed my own guidelines, which we were gonna wait for questions until the end of the panel. <laughs> um, so it's all right, uh, we'll just we'll keep learning and doing better. 
So next okay. we're going to have. Um, Before I go, I'm gonna, let me just ask. That I wondered if people could address if they have any information on uh, sleep disorders in post-COVID patients. That's something we're interested in now. I don't know if, if you, but if you could let Jan, Janet know if you have information there, that would be helpful. Yeah. Thank, thanks, folks. Thank you. That is of great interest to our community as well. Um, but I don't think I have anything to sh that I would share. I don't know. I'm sure we could get that information, though, to you, Janet, if we hear. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. All right.